She is a celebrity, mother, author, and an entrepreneur. She has even been called a daredevil and a free spirit. She is a Canadian television and radio icon that is motivated for success. Her remarkable career began as somewhat of an accident. She became the first female traffic reporter to pilot her own helicopter. Her name is Dini Petty. Dini moved from radio to TV in 1977, joining City TV as host of her own daily talk show called Sweet City Woman. When City Pulse News hit the airwaves, Dini started as a general reporter and ended up as co-anchor of the 6 o'clock news. Dini moved to CTV as host of the Dini Petty Show in 1989. She has won numerous awards throughout her career and her interviewing skills have earned her international acclaim. Join me, Diana Bumbaka, as I talk one-on-one -on -one with Dini Petty right after this break. And I have to tell you, I don't know if you remember your first um, interview, but I do. It was Patrick McNee, and it was live television, and I had all everything in my head, and I didn't write it down. And the red light went on, and I asked him the first question, and I blanked. I went, and I remember sitting there having no idea what. And he'd been in the business long enough, you know. He, I think he recognized the look, startled deer in headlights, mm -hmm. and he said, "Ah, I know you want to ask about me, you know, my family." I went, "Yeah, yeah, tell me about your family." The entire interview went like that. Welcome to One on One, I'm Diana Bombaca. Today I am speaking with the legendary radio and television personality, Dini Petty. Thank you very much for joining me. That's my pleasure. Now everybody knows you from your fantastic radio and television career, but I've read that your career started really by accident. How did it start? My mother was one of Canada's first talent agents. And I went down to my mother's office one day and I had gone to the dentist and I was 11. I'd been dropped off at the dentist and I had to walk two blocks to her office. So I go and I'm sitting waiting for my mom. And they were trying to cast a lead role in a film for the National Film Board. And the director, uh, Donna Hall Dane, came out and said, who's that girl? My mother said, don't be ridiculous, it's my daughter. And he said, I want her to read for the part. Well, I got the part. So I started um, doing some things when I was like 11. I played a 13-year-old. I was tall. And, but I had to change my name because my mother was the agent. So I started my career as Diana Kerr, which was my mother's maiden name. So in my childhood, I was always Molly's daughter. And when my mother passed away, she was always Deanie's mother. So it turned out to be a good trade. Uh, what a reciprocal relationship. Yeah, so, you know, go to the dentist. It's maybe not such a bad thing. Okay. <laughs> now, throughout your career, you've done some extraordinary things. What would you say have been some of your challenges career-wise? earning a living and feeding two children and having no support and doing it on my own. That was probably the biggest thing. I, I never did anything because I had a plan. Mm -hmm. I never went into, uh, I never flew a helicopter, went into television because I thought, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I was always, uh, well, um, I have to feed myself. How am I gonna do that? And, oh man, I've got these two kids. Now what are we gonna do? So things, f uh, there are two kinds of people in the world. Those who have a plan, and you go to school with them, remember them? They were going to be the doctors and mm -hmm. the vets and you know the teachers. And you meet them at the reunion. And they're the doctor, the vet, and the teacher. And the rest of us kind of go, um, don't know. Let's. And I certainly belong to that class. Now, you already mentioned at the age of 22, you were flying a helicopter, the first woman to do a broadcast while piloting a helicopter. Yeah. Was being a woman uh, impeding your career in any way, or do you think it helped you? Fortunately, I didn't, you, you don't see the other side. I worked with all men, and in most helicopters, there was a guy who did the flying and a guy who did the announcing, except at CKY, where one guy did both. And there was this big uh, war going on, helicopter war, traffic reports were new. It was such a big deal. And somebody in marketing at the radio station said, I know how we're going to win this war. We'll get a girl. We'll put her up in a, in a pink helicopter. She'll wear pink. She'll do both. And all they had to do was find a girl. Now really, you know, if I look back, I can tell you that my that entire career that you referred to happened because when I was <clears throat> 17, I forged my mother's uh, signature to a piece of paper so I could go skydiving. Really? And because I did the skydiving, I literally was out of a job and went to lunch with a girlfriend, another coincidence, and some men came in from the radio station, and in the course of their lunch, they're, where are we going to find this girl? 
And we knew one of the men socially, and he knew I'd done some skydiving. And he said, see that girl? That's Deanie Petty. You know, she's crazy enough to jump out of an airplane. Maybe she's crazy enough to fly a helicopter. Wow. And turns out I am. <laughs> so for up-and-coming journalists or those who want to be in television and radio, would you say it's a career of coincidence, or what advice would you offer them? It's difficult to offer people advice besides forging your mother's signature mm -hmm. so you can go skydiving. Um, I think if you actually have a draw to something and you actually have enough clarity, as apparently the woman who was interviewing me, someone suggested to you, you should probably look at journalism, which is a nice coincidence, mm -hmm. and you went, what? So now here you are. So if, if, you, if you actually have the draw yourself and you want to be the teacher, the whatever you happen to know, go for it. And if you don't know, you have to do things. Nothing happens when you sit at home alone dreaming that something will happen. Mm -hmm. Jump out of an airplane, join a photography club, uh, go to lunch, with, just do anything. And the more things you do, the more chances you are that you, know, you have a coincidence and good luck will fall into your life. But if you sit at home alone, it's amazing how little can happen. Life passes you by. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when City TV hit the air, or City Pulse, rather, yeah. you became a reporter and co-anchor with Gord Martineau. Yeah. How was that transition for you from flying in a helicopter to being a co-anchor? I have 5,000 hours uh, flying a helicopter. At about 3,000 hours, I went, I'm going to lose my mind up here. I am looking at traffic accidents. I flew for 5,000 hours, and for 5,000 hours, I said, four cars, two cars, front end, back end. I thought, I can't keep doing this. I'm going to lose my mind. And so I phoned uh, City TV. I phoned Moses and Imer, and I said, you ought to hire me. And he said, why should I hire you? And I did that speech, you know, I'll be the best employee ever had, rack, rack. But I had that bit of fame that mm -hmm. the helicopter gave me. And so I went, um, and they hired me. And I have to tell you, I don't know if you remember your first um, interview, but I do. It was Patrick McNee, and it was live television, and I had all, everything in my head, and I didn't write it down. And the red light went on, and I asked him the first question, and I blanked. I went, and I remember sitting there having no idea what, and he'd been in the business long enough, you know. He, I think he recognized the look, startled deer in headlights. Mm -hmm. And he said, ah, I know, you want to ask about me, you know, my family. I went, yeah, yeah, tell me about your family. <laughs> the entire interview went like that. So I, I just, I learned the hard way mm -hmm. by falling down on my face a lot. I'm extremely good at failure. Well, I'm going to stop you right there. When we come back from break, we'll talk a little bit more about both your successes and failures. Okay. Please stay with us. There's more to come on One on One with Dini Petty. Welcome back to One on One. Joining me today is Dini Petty. Now, Dini, in 1980, you made television history by allowing cameras to follow you through your pregnancy with your son, Nicholas. What was that experience like? Um, it was interesting. Um, I actually got talked into it. And I, I was the first woman on television where they actually showed the lump. They used to photograph women for Here Up. And you cannot believe the phone calls I got from people. Really? Oh, that's disgusting. I said, excuse me, sir, what is disgusting? And somehow, um, and ever since I did it, and they said, you had your baby on TV, you know what picture you get in your mind when you, there's a lot of things I put on TV that is definitely the one thing I would not show. So you didn't see him emerge, mm -hmm. uh, but you did see when you, when you get around to having a kid, your knees are up and they're draped, so mm -hmm. the camera was behind me, so you saw him as he was handed to me. Um, it was good, I guess, in the end. Um, they blew up the switchboard the day he was born. He had so many calls. My room looked like a funeral parlor. And I, you know, I've just had a baby and I'd wake up and there'd be people in my room who I didn't know. And they'd go, hi, <laughs> we really like your show. And i go, oh, hi, um, sure, come on in. <laughs> so it was, um, it was spectacular. For Nick, I think it was strange. Did he get to watch it later on? Uh, he did when he was, uh, he's 25 and I finally got him to see it when he was 18. And he, I, so we watch it. And I said, what did you think? He said, Mom, the whole city saw my bag. I went, oh, my God, Nick, I'm so sorry. I never thought of that. So the male reaction was, you put me naked on television. You know? Did you reach your goal of breaking the stigma of childbirth? I had no idea we were doing that. Okay. Um, when I had amniocentesis, mm -hmm. where um, they, they put a needle in and they take a bit of fluid out, we filmed it. I am lying in the table and the camera's starting and it, it dawns on me, what if this hurts? That's the first time, that, what if this hurts? Mm -hmm. What if I'm being filmed and I'm screaming? It didn't hurt, it was like giving blood, and they ended up using the film for years for women 
who, like I, went in there thinking, oh my God, this is going to be horrible. Mm -hmm. So it may have demystified. I just got talked into something which turned out to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, after that, you went on to host City Line and yes. with CTV, uh, the Dini Petty Show. Right. What makes a good talk show host? I think being interested in your, um, in your guest, I think the ability to listen. Mm -hmm. I think if you, if you and I met at a cocktail party, you would never have a question, but you would listen to me. Mm -hmm. And every time I told you something interesting, you, uh, that, would, that would be the best interview mm -hmm. because you're genuinely fascinated by what you hear and your attention doesn't leave. So I would listen to what my researchers wrote and said, and then I'd sit down and do what I wanted to do. Because in television, people and people will tell you how to dress, how to wear your hair, what questions to ask, and how to do it. And you listen to all these people. And then they change those people. And these new people tell you what to do. And at a certain point, I decided, you know what? I'm going to do it my way. I did my own makeup. I did my own hair. I picked my own clothes. And I discovered that my secret to success was I'm pretty much the same way on camera as I am off camera. So the more you can be yourself, the more successful you'll be. Not that being myself is a talent, mm -hmm. but it worked for me. You've just, now I'm listening to you rather than thinking of what my people have told me. So what would you say then is the best way to succeed in television and in personal life? Sleep with everybody you have to, honey. Really? No. <laughs> Did you really think I meant that? No, but you were so honest. Then. I know. I think the best line I've ever heard about that is Sharon Stone. You said, remember, you can only sleep your way to the middle. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a career, you, you have to take advice from people, but in the end, you have to define yourself. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, you end up trying to please everybody, and you can't do that. It, it will make you crazy. I remember a woman at City TV, I remember it was in her contract. If she gained more weight, they'd fire her. Really? Well, yeah, be, because women have, I mean, look at the women on television, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're an attractive woman. There aren't many unattractive women on television. Mm -hmm. There's more unattractive men. So they will try to stick you into a mold. They will try to make you how they believe you should be. But if you really want to get anywhere in life, um, and you start sleeping with people, that's directly the way to the exit door. Because mm -hmm. they use it over you and they lure it. And it's the worst thing to do, actually. The best thing to do is just figure it out for yourself and be who you are. And then you become a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I was successful for that long. Well, on that note, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the place of women in the world. Okay. Please stay with us. There's more to come on One on One with Jeannie Petty. Welcome back to One on One. Joining me today is Deanie Petty. Now, just before we went to break, we were talking a little bit about the place of women in today's mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Now, you came into an industry that was mainly male-dominated. Do you think it's changed at all today? Uh, it, uh, plus de change, plus de même shows. The more it changes, the more it stays the same. When I look at young women, I'm inspired because I, I see that they have a, they have more together. That the the absolutely rigid roles that we were to conform to as, as young women and the things we were supposed to do and how we were supposed to act are slowly changing and we are breaking those things down. But there's still a struggle for women. Mm -hmm. I mean, the worst part about starting on a career is at some point in your life you're going to have children. Well, that brings up a whole other thing, you know, and be, well, we don't want to hire her because she's going to have kids and stuff. No, it's, it's fine. You, you are treated differently. If you look at the, at the power um, in the world, uh, who's still running it? It's still a matri uh, It's still a patriarchal society. Men mm -hmm. still have all the power. If you look at uh, the major positions, but women have definitely made great inroads. Uh, but there's still that that struggle for women um, because we are so t such a multicultural city. Every every culture has its different rules for for women. So they. You come to Canada, you live within this culture that's got all these rules they're imposing, and then you go out and you get these rules imposed. So it's, it's not an easy thing. Um, and it is. There, there are a certain amount of struggles. I mean, I worked with all men when I was flying helicopters. And you know, mm -hmm. when I s asked the guy who flew me before I got my license what he thought about the fact I was going to put him out of a job, he laughed. You're not going to do it. We all know you're not going to do it. When I started in television, there was still, women were paid less. Mm -hmm. Women still make 75%. Um, and women really have to define themselves in two ways, because 
we are the child bearers, we are the nurturer, you are going to be the mother, so you, you have to balance those things and try to figure out how you're going to put it all together and what's important for you. And you have to stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. you, can't take, you can't take it. You can't let people treat you uh, with disrespect. Do you think women have been successful in finding that balance? Um, I do. I think we're going down the road. I think we're making our way, but there's still there is still a ways to go. I mean, how many of us are still trying to be the nicest person in the world? Hi, I am the nicest person in the world, and yes, I'll do everything for everybody, and of course I'll do that for you, and yes, I can do that, and yes, I'll join that committee, and yes, I'll do that, and yes, 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 and we, we got to give that up, mm -hmm. you know, and and to take your place as an equal, you have to. You know, you can't make those little mistakes, and I know a beautiful young woman who, we were talking about this earlier, and I was kidding, who did have an affair with the boss, and now he just runs her around, and she's finally leaving. She's quitting, mm -hmm. which is the really the right thing to do, and that's a very big lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, where have we made these advancements, if we have? Uh, we've, we've made them throughout society, throughout our culture, to stand up for ourselves. I'm concerned about the... Um, the big swing I see going the other way about the anti-abortionists, anti mm -hmm. which is basically, it's a religious argument. Mm -hmm. It's what I perceive as my right and what I believe about my body from my religious viewpoint. And you see it swinging very hard the other way. Um, and that, that bothers me. Um, I see that women are still sort of having unequal pay. Uh, that bothers me. I see women... Um, uh, you know, still trying to be the, trying to be everything to all people, mm -hmm. and and but then I see strong young women standing up for themselves, and I'm inspired by what I see. But it's still it's that constant evolution. Now, was the position for of women in society today an inspiration for your Broadview uh, theatrical performance? Um, it's. I don't think I ever did anything to inspire anybody. I don't think, I think if you go through your life thinking, well, I'm doing this to inspire the people, like you're in trouble because you'll, I, you, you, you've got to get lost in your own ego. Mm -hmm. I think you do what you feel you have to do for whatever reason. You're driven to feed your children. I'm driven by, was driven by that, and I'm also driven by the fact that creativity is the thing that keeps me alive and is the reason that I live. So I took on the challenge of doing a one-woman show, and sometimes I ask myself, what was I thinking? And it is the most difficult creative thing I've ever done. We're going to stop right there. We'll talk a little bit more about the One Woman Show right after this break. Please stay with us. There's more to come with Deanie Petty. Welcome back to One on One. Joining me is Dini Petty. Now, just before we went to break, we were talking about your one woman show. What is the goal of your show? Um, it's truth with humor. So I'll, I'll entertain you, I'll make you laugh, I'll bring a tear to your eye. And a couple of times the audience <gasps> gasps. So I'll take you on a journey to places you, in worlds that you don't know, and places that I've been. Have you heard stories where people have had a, an experience of self discovery after seeing your show? I don't know if I would use self-discovery. I get a lot of feedback that people, uh, because I recite some of my poetry in it, mm -hmm. because really what I am in my heart of hearts is a poet, but it's awfully difficult to feed two kids and make a living that way. Mm -hmm. um, so they enjoy it, and they're, they're, I think they're surprised at what they learn. Now, you had mentioned some of your poetry earlier. You showed me one of your poems. Would you mind reciting it for us? No, I, I would love to. Um, well, the thing I didn't mention that I, and it, I guess this relates in part to it. The biggest problem I see that young women and young men have is, and still one of the biggest problems, is low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Most of us come from dysfunctional family backgrounds. If you take into account, you know, use of drugs and alcohol and extreme religious or philosophical upbringing and verbal, mental, physical, sexual abuse, that's a lot more than 50% of us. Mm -hmm. And low self-esteem, self-confidence is number of times through, by your, your first interview is terrible, by your fifth thousandth you're like, oh, this is a breeze. Self-esteem is what you think about yourself inside, and most of us struggle with that. I s didn't realize till I was 50 that constant criticizing yourself is low self-esteem. And every time I looked in the mirror, and that's what I say to people, want to know if you have low self-esteem? What do you do when you look in the mirror before you go to bed? 
oh, my nose is too fat, my hips are too flabby, this is wrong, this is wrong. And all you do is crit it. That's low self-esteem. So it's a journey to accept yourself, and, and that's the most important thing you can do. So this is a piece of poetry that I wrote that's based on a, a piece of advice that comes from a woman who was born in 1900, uh, who happened to be my grandmother. And it goes like this. Take care of yourself, love, because if you don't, no one else will. My grandmother's advice, Edith Petty, born 1900 to 1978, to which this granddaughter, Deanie Petty, 1945 to who knows when, adds, throw yourself at the world. Seize every moment and opportunity, and when you fail, and you will fail, drop gracefully to the ground, lie there for a moment or five, and do whatever you have to do. Then get up, dust, dust yourself off, and go at it again and again and again until life itself sings through your soul. Seek out the beauty in all things and in all beings, and remember that by their actions you shall know them. Learn through stones and arrows, Ask every question that crosses your mind. Follow every thought that seems right to you. Love every man worth your love. Take a moment or two for every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and a hundred thousand more moments just for you. Enjoy those dreams that do come true and endure. But whatever you do, wherever you go, take care of yourself, love, because if you don't, no one else will. Take care of yourself, love with the best hairdresser, accountant, lawyer, and financial information you can find. Seek counsel from those you respect, but in the end, make your decision based solely on what's good for you. Let people earn your trust. Don't give it away. Let them earn your respect every single day. Take care of yourself, love, because if you don't, no one else will. What a fantastic lesson. Thank you. Apparently, it's a famous English saying. My grandmother was born in England. Really? Yeah, older woman, an 88-year-old woman heard it and said, oh, my grandmother, my friend said that. So. Now, as an inspirational speaker to many people, is that something that you would hope they would take away from you? This is the best advice I have. Go for it. You will fail. Get up. Keep going. Respect yourself. I think a big problem for us, because we all come from families like mine, where telling the truth was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So we go out into the world like I did and tell the truth and think everybody else does. There are liars and cheaters and thieves out there just looking for people who tell the truth and believe that everyone tells them. So you have to, don't give your trust away. Make people earn it, mm -hmm. you know, and don't give your respect away. Let them earn your respect. It's a big lesson. Well, Dini, I want to say thank you very much for joining me today. It was an honor to be able to speak with you. My pleasure. Continued success, Diana. Thank you. That wraps up another edition of One on One. We hope to see you next time. <laughs>